Hi everyone, in this video we'll take a look at frame synchronizers and how you can control them from a new Skyway controller called Rack Control Duo. It's a two rack unit controller with 12 encoders designed to do frame synchronizer control. And um, we have uh, five frame synchronizers over here connected to four cameras, a JVC camera here, and this is the HC900. We have a new tech camera here and a little GoPro camera over close to the frame synchronizers. Now, obviously these cameras could be shaded while the GoPro camera couldn't. And one of the great things about frame synchronizers is that they include a color correcting engine that will allow us to adjust colors on any video source, including like a GoPro camera. Now, in this video, the, uh, we'll be looking at, at actually four different controllers. So you see we have uh, the Rack Control Duo, that's the main star of the video. Then we have the Color Fly here and also an Inline 10 and an RCP. Now, we have actually covered how the uh, RCP form factor can work with frame synchronizers. So let's look at the Rack Control Duo and the Gang Control that we want to focus on primarily. Now, the Rack Control Duo was actually conceived as a product to work with the frame synchronizers and do multi-channel control. So what we have here is a channel selector that will um, select any channel across multiple frame synchronizers and give you seamless control of those channels by the knobs up here for red, uh, blue, uh, green and blue gain. We have our black here in the middle, red, green, blue, and we have gamma, red, green, blue on the far right of this controller. Okay, so what we can see right now, if we look in the displays, we see that uh, gain for, for red, green, and blue uh, currently says multiple in the display. It means that for those channels we have selected, which is currently nine channels, the values will differ across those channels. And if I'm adjusting the values, turning this knob, I'm adjusting all the values relatively to each other, okay? But if I press and hold the encoders like I do right now, I'm resetting to unity values, in this case one. So now I know that all my nine selected channels have the same value, which is the one I see in the display. And as I'm now turning the knobs to adjust the red gain for these nine channels, I will see the value because it's the same across those nine. And that's a very useful feature that you are able in that way to uh, inspect the values of multiple channels. If you see the value, you know it's the same across all those channels. So basically what we have here is the ability to select on and off channels. And you can see when I have only one channel left, then all the displays will of course show the value for that particular one. When I select a different channel, so now I have a group of two channels, then it, some of the displays will show multiple again, because the values are multiple different values. Like you can see minus eight here, if we have only that channel and it's zero here in that case. But as I just demonstrated, press and hold will reset to unity. And now you can see for each of these channels, the value is zero. So one of the things that will be super useful when you can do this multi-channel select is the ability to group them and save groups of channels. This is why we have a, a preset selection tool up here. So when I press this button, you can see that I I uh, recall a collection of four channels down here. When I press the second one, you see another four channels are selected. And when I press the third one, I have another four channels. But now look at what I'm doing right here. If I toggle on and off a few other channels here, so we have this collection. Let's say that this is um, one that I want to save. I can uh, store that in, in, in a memory group preset six by pressing and holding until it's green. And now that collection is safe. So let's just see if that's true. If I press this one, you see I recall those four, but now I press button number six, you see I recall the selection I just stored. So in this way you can easily group the channels together and store them as a, a preset of that group of channels. So there are um, other features in this panel as well. Uh, and just quickly for the record, we have currently 24 channels loaded here. And if I press the shift key, you see that I have access to another, no, 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 it's 18. Who taught me math? It's 18 channels, sorry about that. So we have 18 channels which are currently green, but then if I press the shift key, I have access to another 18 channels on frame synchronizers, which in this case is not connected. So this is why you see them light up as red. But uh, if I had them, they would also show up here. Likewise, I can, you know, add them to the memory group and so forth. 
Further, we put down a color corrector on off button here. So if I press this button, I turn off uh, and on the color corrector and um, um, then I have buttons over here, which is essentially a little menu. So the first button shows me that the panel is in color state and that's where we do the coloring that I just showed you. But if I go to preset, a part of the panel changes and that this part. This part is actually recalling presets in frame synchronizers. When I press button number one, I am recalling a preset in multiple frame synchronizers. Those selected here, which turns out to be three of the frame synchronizers, will have their preset number one recalled. And that is very, very useful when you have an OB truck with presets stored for different locations. And you want to go to location three, let's say that's preset number three, then pressing that button will give you instant recall of preset number three across multiple frame synchronizers. So even in your setup where you would usually use the web interface of the frame synchronizers, you have this convenience of preset recall from a button on a tactile control surface like the Skahoy Rack Control Duo. If I go to the setup tab, then I have access to some setup features and that's not specific for the frame synchronizers, but let me just iterate through what we see here. We have panel brightness, panel sleep time. We have a color of the panel. If you want to have a unified color across the panel, you can see I'm able to, to turn this knob and then the whole panel color will, will turn into the one shown right there. Uh, you can see I'm turning on and off uh, the panel brightness here, which is uh, very useful as well. If you have a dimmed light environment, you want to dial down the brightness of the values. I have IP address selection over here, so you can set up the IP address of the panel from the unit itself. Let's get back to the color location here. Let's see how this is actually um, addressing the values in frame synchronizer. So what I want to do is I press and hold this one, which will give me instant selection of channel number one on frame synchronizer number one. And in my web interface here, you see uh, input number one. I can go to the color section here, see, and uh, here we have the values for red, black and um, gamma, um, green, gain, black and gamma and so forth. Those are the values that we are selecting from here. And notice the, for instance, the red value is currently 1.48. And if I turn the knob here, then you can see this value is changing in the web interface as well. And obviously if I change it in the web interface, it would also follow along on the panel when uh, we have an update coming from the panel. It's uh, doing this periodically. So in a moment, we'll see this value is changing. So uh, of course I can do the same for green now that we saw the value change and uh, blue over here. So that's as expected, the same thing that you see in the web interface will also be available uh, from the panel. Now we have other products uh, on the table today and I want to show how Rack Control Duo functionality can also be presented in a more compact form factor. And that's why we included the inline 10. So if I just put this panel aside and we take the inline 10 into uh, view here, you can see inline 10. What we see here is the same as the channel selector that we saw on the Rack Control Duo. But since I don't have that many buttons, I need to use a paging function. So if I press this button, you can see that I'm selecting different buttons on page number two, number three, and so forth. So I can, I can uh, page through the, the panel, the channels that I want to select using the other five buttons. Why? Because the rightmost button is set up as a four-way button, which means that it detects uh, edge presses on left and right edge, top and bottom. And we can use that to create flexibility in how the controller operates. So paging is one of them. But if I press the lower key, uh, the lower edge of the button, I'm basically having a home mode. But I want to show you that if I press the upper key, then I'm, I'm going through, you see first, uh, selection, uh, selection of channels. Then the next one is memory group presets. That's where I store the collections of channels that I, I showed you on the upper left corner on the Rack Control Duo. And if I press again, I have access to presets recalled across frame synchronizers. And then finally here, these buttons play no role, but now I have access to different uh, panel related settings like brightness and sleep and color as I showed on the other one. If I press the lower edge of this button, I am normalizing the panel back to um, what is usually there. 
So I have these channels selected, but if you see up here, we have gain, red, green, and blue. If I use this button over here, I get access to black now. And if I go to uh, level number two, I have access to gamma. And then once again, I'm back to gain. So inline 10 compresses all this into basically a quarter of the size of the rec control duo. You get the same functionality, but with less direct access but in a smaller form factor. And that's the Skaho universe in a nutshell, that you can choose any form factor you like, and you can expect the same software features to exist on that panel. If we move on to the Colorfly, the Colorfly has a more uh, generic implementation of the frame synchronizers. In this case, we see features like, um, we can see we have a gain up here, red, green, and blue again, and we can turn on and off the color corrector up here. We also have proc amp on and off on this button. We have legalizer on and off on this button. Um, we have uh, um, scaling and positioning. We can turn that part of the frame synchronizer on and off. So you see a, a lot of the additional features in the frame synchronizers would be available on the Colorfly. Again, it's a matter of configuration. It's not that the rec control can't do it, you can, but it's not relevant in that use case it was configured for. Because the Rack Control Duo was made for live quick adjustments with tactile control of specifically red, green and blue for gamma gain and black. That was the use case, multi-channel and so forth. The use case for the Colorfly is different. This is oriented more towards the single frame synchronizer and having access to all the additional features that it contains like uh, region of interest, which is also something you can set up here and you can select the different modes uh, with, uh, with these buttons by pressing again the sides to go forth and back. This is like a menu selector that will tell you if this is uh, a gain, black and gamma up here. If I press here, you can see that we have uh, access to the um, uh, some uh, program related features. Uh, here you have um, region of interest scaling with the percentages for left, right, top and bottom that you can select here. And if you press the, the upper edge here, this is like a two-way menu button. When you press the upper edge, you're basically talking to uh, uh, some other aspects of the region of interest scaler, like custom size aspect, positioning horizontally and vertically. Then over here, we have input format uh, selection going on. And down here, you can select which channels of the frame synchronizer we're operating on. And finally, you have a shift key right there. One of the cool things about a color fly is that we have motorized faders. And uh, I want to show you that this fader, for instance, is uh, currently uh, working on the proc amp of the uh, signal. So you can even see on my quad view that you, uh, you see on, on the picture here, which uh, I think we'll get back to that in a moment because you can see they have really horribly um, colors on them. But if I turn this one up to just uh, complete this, this one, you can see that it, it means that I have turned the proc amp all the way up. Uh, as you can see in the web interface, I, I could turn it down. And while this is happening, you see on the color fly that the fader is moving along. So there you really have like this nice, perfect correspondence between the two. Uh, the RCP was covered in a different video. I suggest that you do a search on YouTube for frame synchronizers, AJ, Skahoy, and then you'll find a description of how the RCP operates. But I can show you in this case that as I'm now operating the joystick, we map the joystick to the program, which now means the fader is moving up and down along with us on the color fly. So in fact, all these four panels are connected to the frame synchronizers simultaneously and picking up information from them at the same time, meaning that uh, whatever I do on the RCP will be reflected on the other panels. Let's just get back to the con Rack Control Duo and look at the preset recall across frame synchronizers because we haven't interested uh, ourselves too much about the actual color output. So you can see we have a quad view of channels that we can inspect. And uh, the first thing I want to do is to just show you that if I press the preset button here, I'm recalling a preset which uh, installs absolutely horrible colors on all the cameras. If I press the second preset, I am now installing more natural colors on these channels. If you uh, look at what I have right here, then uh, with the four channels selected on the frame, uh, sorry, the Red Control Duo right now, I can press and hold these buttons to, to reset to Unity. So you'll see that 
uh, as I'm doing that, you can actually see these values are now normalized. But let me just show you how the gain control works. So as I'm now turning this knob, we should be able to see a significant red shift on the upper left quadrant on the quad view. And um, uh, actually on all of them, uh, if you look at it, because of course all of them were selected. Let's just try to uh, mistreat this a little bit more. So now you can really see that. But if I deselect this channel, or, or those two channels, then as I'm, I'm turning this knob again, you'll see that I'm only adjusting two of the channels in my quad view, as I'm now only having those two selected, naturally, of course. Yes, um, so that's what is in, involved in gain control. Now you can see it on this picture. I won't spend a whole lot of time in trying to, to shade these images um, because they, uh, I'm, I'm not really an expert in actually matching colors up and so on. I take that you are, since you are watching this video and you know exactly how you want to do this. Our uh, red control duo will just give you the tactile control that is sometimes essential in a live environment where you need to have a better interface than a web browser to do this for the particular channels that you want to do. And that's coming out of this unit where also you'll be able to see the labels in the displays are picked up from the frame synchronizers. So as you label your channels meaningfully, you'll even see that in the displays. And that's again a typical Skahoy value proposition that you get the, um, the displays to show you dynamic labeling that will help you to, to build a very user-friendly control experiences um, where it's, it's clear what uh, individual buttons do, what parameters they control, and you have the flexibility of, of reusing the buttons by building menus and pages of functionality on the controllers. Thanks for watching and I uh, hope you like this overview of the various control solutions that would apply to AJA frame synchronizers. Mm -hmm.